the windows started creaking. Hail was hitting the windows. It was just uh, terrifying. There you go. Oh. Oh. It was unreal. I've never seen anything like it. Such devastation. Wow. We had no idea that Elmira would look like this. When we heard about the EF1 tornado that struck Elmira, New York, we knew we had to help. There were reports of thousands of trees covering roadways. Some of these trees were 100 to 150 feet tall. In the wake of a catastrophe like an EF1 tornado, roads need to be cleared immediately. If those roads aren't cleared, the ambulances and the fire trucks and the police department are not gonna be able to access the community, get to the houses, and find out if people are okay. A small community like Elmira is not gonna have the heavy equipment on hand to deal with a catastrophe of this size, but the first response team has a grapple truck that's specifically designed to deal with huge amounts of tree debris. Fortunately, we were at our home base in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, only about six hours away. So we hopped in our truck, drove through the night, and were there by sunup. When we arrived in Elmira, the city officials looked at our grapple truck, saw that it was an amazing resource, and put us right to work. The city had a lot of dump trucks, but not many ways to get that debris loaded up into the back of dump trucks and out of town. That's where our grapple truck comes in handy. Right now what we're doing is we're going from street to street, picking up all this debris and loading it in the city trucks. We're loading each dump truck up in about three to five minutes. It's going really fast. I think the city workers and officials were a bit surprised at how fast their community was getting cleaned up. The street guys are telling me, Brian, who's this group? None of the other guys are working like this. We're, it's a madhouse seeing you guys clear this much room. We're getting this a lot done. Way more than the others. So. All right, let's keep at it then. The swift progress we were making was amazing. And it just lifted the spirits of not only the workers, but the community. Nothing lifts spirits more than to see progress happen and for the community to begin to see and to believe that things are going to get back to normal again. In a matter of one day, it looks like we've got almost 11 blocks cleared. Yep. Now we're moving into a, uh, a more of a downtown urban setting that's a little more tricky to deal with because we've got a lot of power lines around Overhead here. Issues, yep. Trying to clear roads in a downtown urban community like Elmira can be extremely dangerous. Hold it! Hold it! There's low-hanging power lines, power lines on the ground, and power lines wrapped up in trees. If Tim made one false move with that crane and touched one of those power lines, he could have been electrocuted and killed. When you're working around the power lines with these grapple trucks, you really have to be on your game and constantly be paying attention to what you're loading. I'm very confident in my skills, so it's a, a risk I'm really willing to take to help clean up the area. There were some areas with low power lines that were just too dangerous to bring the grapple truck in, and the only way to pull these trees out was with the ram. The debris needs to be pulled to the road. We got these huge logs here. We need to hook the ram up to them, pull them to the side of the road, and load them in the city trucks. Looking good. Man, it's breaking that tree right in half. Keep going, keep going. Yay. Other dangers were a little more unusual, but just as real. We got to this one tree that had fallen, and it was covered in thousands of bees. Timmy, if you grab this tree, you're gonna get attacked by a couple thousand bees. Being up on top of the crane, that is the worst place to be because you are 13 feet in the air and I have nowhere to go. If I start getting stung, I have to jump off somewhere and I could hit the controls and drop the tree on somebody. I have a feeling we're gonna have to leave this tree and move on to the next pile. In a matter of five short days, we were able to clear almost 15,000 cubic yards of debris. The community was so thankful as we went from home to home and picked up this debris and got it out of town. We're sitting here wondering, how long is this gonna take? How are we gonna fight through this? And, and we question ourselves. And then when we see a community seeing this go this well, communities, it, it's, it's light at the end of the tunnel. It's hope. It's everybody working and saying to the community, look, look what we're getting done. I'm always humbled when people take the time in situations like this to show their appreciation for the team and what we're doing to help the community. In the city of Elmira, the mayor took time out of her very busy schedule to present us with the key to the city. For 
all your hard work. This is a small token of appreciation for everything that you've done for us. He doesn't open a lot of doors in the city, but you're always welcome here. and Come back and visit us. I've been to a lot of disasters over the last few years, and there's two things that I believe communities must have to help themselves to get back on their feet, and that's optimism and hard work. It was clear to me that the people of Elmira had these qualities, and together, with our equipment and their resources, we were able to get that city cleaned up.